Are you sui juris? Copyright authored by PAC Info at PassonLaw.org. Political awareness issue. First, we evidence two legal definitions of sui juris. Sui juris. One who has all the rights to which a freeman is entitled. One who is not under the power of another, as a slave, a minor, and the like. To make a valid contract, a person must, in general, be sui juris. Everyone of full age is presumed to be sui juris. Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1856, sui juris. Of full capacity, in his own right, capable of entering into a contract. Bolentini's Law Dictionary, 3rd edition. Please note that both definitions have the element of contract. Now, please note that the first definition above states, one who is not under the power of another, as a slave, a minor, and the like. Consequently all such persons of such nature are not considered to be of a sui juris status. Now, let us consider some elements to see if you are of the like. To see if you are not, of the like, and, not under the power of another, answer these following questions. 1. Are you a citizen of the United States and are you willing to be one? 2. Do you have and willingly utilize a social security number and do you plan to take benefits from the social security program? If you answered yes to either one of the above questions, you are not truly sui juris. Why you ask? Because, in essence, you as an adult are under the guardianship of the federal government, i.e. the United States. To further explain, when you turned 18 years of age you had the choice to be a dependent of the federal government or to become fully sui juris. As you have voluntarily elected to be a United States citizen, thus having to take a social security number SSN based on positive law of the federal nation, you went from being a child of your parents to being a child of the government s. Unbeknownst to you this was your first hidden contract when you reached your age of majority. It is called acquiescence by silence. See the following definitions which define the foregoing inflicted status as defined by American Heritage Dictionary. Dependent 1. Contingent on another 2. Subordinate 3. Relying on or requiring the aid of another for support, dependent children. 4. Hanging down, dependent and, also dependent. One who relies on another especially for financial support, guardian 1. One that guards, watches over, or protects. 2. Law. One who is legally responsible for the care and management of the person or property of an incompetent or a minor. Vas Sal. 1. A person who held land from a feudal lord and received protection in return for homage and allegiance. 2. A bondman, a slave. 3. A subordinate or dependent. People's Awareness Coalition PassonLaw.org. Without a doubt, all the above definitions fit perfectly and are applicable. This situation is stealthily imposed on you. Section 1 of the 14th Amendment of the Federal Constitution fundamentally naturalizes you at birth and takes you out of your native state at birth. You are then a federal national rather than a lawful national of your state. Due to this inflicted situation you are more than of the like. Not only are you considered a minor of sorts, you are specifically a slave or are in servitude if you vote. You may see, fiction of law, and, silent judicial notice, for the particulars of the above stated legal premise. In other words, you do not have to be duly convicted to be in servitude, you are silently condemned for being a United States citizen. Under the doctrine of tacit and positive law you have volunteered and or contracted to be a United States citizen and have lost your natural rights to the state. The citizen cannot complain, because he has voluntarily submitted himself to such a form of government and must pay the penalties. That was stated by the Supreme Court in U.S. v. Cruikshank.1. Consequently, the governments can make you do whatever they want. Pay unconstitutional taxes. Put you in jail for victimless crimes. Take your property without a court proceeding. Fight private wars for the New World Order etc., etc., because fundamentally you are a vassal.
This is all component of totalitarian socialism. But you have volunteered. Under principles of common law, it should also be understood that silence will regard one's status to be that of a de facto citizen of the United States of America. Hence, as a person being a subject of the new political system and receiver of its benefits, he is subject to income tax. Accordingly, the below cannot be evidenced enough. In veto beneficium non dacher, no one is obliged to accept a benefit against his consent. But if he does not dissent, he will be considered as assenting. Cujus est comitum ej us debit esse incomitum. He who receives the benefit should also bear the disadvantage. Now we ask you, are you truly sui juris? Tilda 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 authored by the People's Awareness Coalition. Pob 313 Keeler, Wisconsin www.passinlaw.org. PAC may be reached via email at info at passinlaw.org. 1. The citizen cannot complain, because he has voluntarily submitted himself to such a form of government. He owes allegiance to the two departments, so to speak, and within their respective spheres must pay the penalties which each exacts for disobedience to its laws. U.S. v. Cruikshank, 92 U.S. 542, 1875, http colon slash 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 a slash 92 slash 542.html. Are you sui juris? Versus point zero four one zero three six. Page 2 of 2.